The key themes for today's session are to pick up on liabilities and risks arising from data protection legislation and from the Freedom of Information Act, and to look at some relevant and useful developments from case law. Liabilities on organisations following the Morrison's decision in the Court of Appeal, where Morrison's were held to be vicariously liable for the actions of a rogue employee that affected 100,000 of their employees. Court found Morrison's firmly liable. That can have serious implications for our clients, large and small. So we are helping clients to navigate their way through those liabilities and minimise them as far as possible. He was an internal auditor. He received a USB stick from KPMG containing significant personal information about 100,000 Morrison's employees and it was significant information. He took them home, took them home to his home computer and decided to upload them to a file sharing website. Morrison's kept in an immediate investigation. Uh, this individual is now serving eight years at Her Majesty's pleasure. Well, it was July 2015, actually, he was convicted. Eight years for various offences of fraud, uh, computer misuse and Section 55 DPA, as you would expect. The ICO looked at what had happened and found there was no case to answer against Morrison's. Where does that leave the 5,500 claimants? The High Court and the Court of Appeal both found that Morrison's were vicariously liable for the actions of that individual, notwithstanding that he went way outside his uh, conventional and actual authority, notwithstanding that he used his private devices out of hours, notwithstanding that his in stated intention was to cause har harm to Morrison's in retribution for the grievance that he felt he had suffered. But for now, a matter of extreme concern to all of us organisations, we have to trust our employees with access to sometimes significant personal data, sometimes significant special category personal data. And yet the Court of Appeal is very clear, we will be vicariously liable as matters stand for any harm that arises um, out of that breach. The main queries that we're receiving from clients are around liabilities and risks in relation to claims for data protection breaches, both current and historic. The claimant industry seems to wise up, as I said earlier, to data protection as a means of obtaining compensation. The claims I am seeing are from the same firms over and over again. They're going in on a no win, no fee uh, basis, so look out for those. Commonly claims for historic data protection breaches will be brought on, on ground. Misuse of private information, breach of confidentiality, breach of Article 8 and breach of the old uh, Data Protection Act regime. What will the courts do? TLT, as I've said, is the leading case on quantum because usually liability cannot be denied in these cases. Particularly in the historic breach cases, we admitted liability. Yes, we lost that social services file. Yes, we shouldn't have sent those minutes to the wrong set of grandparents. We've accepted that. We've admitted it many years ago. What's the compensation? Well, the claimant will say, I haven't slept for three years. I haven't been able to go home because you disclosed my address. I've been sofa surfing with my children. I want five years worth of compensation for psych psychiatric damage times five. Not a shred of medical evidence, bare assertion. Increasingly, we are seeing individuals using subject access requests. Uh, increasingly, they're more bold with subject access requests. Organisations are more anxious in the way they respond to them. We're seeing them being used as a tactic pre-litigation, while litigation is ongoing, or to support litigation or other um, campaigns that individuals may have or grievances against our clients. Hollyoak and Candy, very high profile litigation. Candy Brothers, very rich uh, property developers. Hollyoak was in business with them, then they fell out. Hollyoak was absolutely convinced that the Candy Brothers had, had him subject to intense secret surveillance going through his bins and he made numerous subject access requests to try and get the information that he said would prove the surveillance had taken place that would help him in his other litigation. This case saw the High Court trying to, ju to juggle with the challenges that we all have dealing with subject access requests. So Hollyoke demands that access is given to all of the director's private email accounts. Is that justified? Hollyoke argues that legal professional privilege is being used as a shield to um, prevent all of these incriminating emails being disclosed, and that's not appropriate. And the Candy Brothers said, hang on a minute, you've got, there's no evidence to say that we've been using our private email accounts in connection with our dealings with you on a professional basis. That's not a justified inquiry, we're not going to do it. Two, legal professional privilege, again, we've got legal professional privilege, it's, it's recognised, the public interest in maintaining it is high. There's no evidence that we're using that to somehow hide our iniquity or hide a fraud that's going on. Um, and third of all, you're only using subject access 
to assist you in your litigation. That's an abuse of that process. Now, that's an argument that's been made many times before. It's a frustration to any of us who deal with subject access requests when we know it's being used as a fishing expedition to try and gain ammunition to support some claim, argument or complaint. So what did the court have to say? In terms of the search we have to do, my argument around 100,000 emails, you only have to do what is reasonable and proportionate. We do not have to ask all of our directors to search all of their private email accounts unless the requester can show us good reason why we should go that far. Hollyoak said, well, have a look at the privileged materials then, Judge. See for yourself. No, Judge, I won't even go that far. You haven't even persuaded me there's a strong enough prima facie case that there is some of your personal data in there where your interest in it outweighs the compelling and overriding public interest in maintaining legal professional privilege. Looking forward, also it's nearly a year on from GDPR, 25th of May will mark one year anniversary. Look back on what we've done, how far have we come. All of our clients should be reviewing their policies, reviewing their procedures, reviewing the way they monitor data flows within and outside their organisations, ensure compliance given the risks that may arise.